I mark pictures. Way to wear it, tea drinking, caffeine intolerant, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de-icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes! This is the challenge. What's up Carp Freaks and welcome to episode 20 of The Challenge. As always, we ask you to vote on three challenge suggestions put forward on Fox's Facebook page. And the one that you guys went for is called Face Your Fears. And it says, at the end of the challenge, Mark will be faced with holding his greatest fear, a slug in his bare hands for three minutes. This is already sounding pretty grim. For every carp he catches, he knocks off a second for every pound that the fish weighs. Twenties get a bonus 10 seconds and thirties get a bonus 20 seconds. He has 24 hours. If Mark passes the challenge, he can make Harry face a fear of his choice. I'm liking the sound of that. Uh, and this challenge was inspired by Daniel Stringer. I say inspired by because Harry has already changed the original challenge quite a bit, haven't you? You've, you've tweaked a bit and... Uh, not, not much. Well, you not haven't made much. it any easier for me, have you? Let's, let's put it that way. Why would I do that? <laughs> have you seen the last sentence? Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy. Now, because we do only have 24 hours to complete this challenge, I've decided to give myself uh, a bit of an edge by coming to a venue that I am familiar with and one that isn't too far from where I live. So I have come to Wellham Lake in Moulton, North Yorkshire, just 45 minutes from my home. And this can be a very prolific venue on its day. Um, it isn't gonna be easy though. There's no doubt about it. It's not gonna be easy. And this is a race against the clock. So will you guys just give me some space and let me get on with it? Gods! I'm joking, let's get the battle loaded. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think my sweet corn's gone off. It smells like sperm. Got the unhooking mat. I think the best chance of catching fish today is going to be off the top. It's such a shallow venue. Average depth is only probably two, two and a half feet. And they do respond well to floaters. The only sort of issue we've got is this wind. It is it's a very windy day. We've got this stiff breeze blowing across the pole. Whenever I've, I've fished here on the top before when it's been windy, it has been tough going. They don't seem to really want to know when there's a bit of a ripple blowing. They do try and seek out any, any sheltered areas, but 
there aren't many sheltered areas that aren't already occupied by anglers. Um, there are fish in this area in front of me, but whether I can get them taking floaters or not is another thing, but uh, I'm going to give it a try anyway. So right now I'm just sticking out a few small uh, eight mil floating trout pellets. I find the smaller ones don't drift quite as fast as the, as the larger ones. When I first got here and I, and I saw just how windy it was, I did, I, I did think it was going to be very hard work. I'd actually um, been to Wellham uh, just a few days before to do a tutorial and it was windy then and the fish just didn't want to take floaters at all in that ripple. And also on, on that occasion, um, we didn't catch anything on the bottom. So I felt like as if I, if I couldn't get them going off the top somewhere, then it may, it may be a bit of a struggle. And is it? I'm going to go and have a look around the back of the island. Where it's a bit more sheltered. This just isn't working. With the wind pushing across the lake where it was, um, I decided to have a look on the island where I felt there'd be uh, some some sheltered sheltered water. And it seemed as though the vast majority of the lake's stock were all held up in this one peg. I didn't think this would be a good place to do a night really, but feeding the wadgers off over there, aren't they? Yeah. I don't even know what a wadger is, but a fish over there in front of the peg itself. Well, I've made a major schoolboy error here. I've come onto the island, brought bucket full of floaters. Just wanted to see what options were available here, see if there's any fish that were prepared to take. I put some floaters out in front of one of the pegs and they are absolutely pack manning and I didn't bring a rod. And these, these, one of these would be so easy to catch right now. They are feeding so confidently. Ah, four have just come up at once. Right, I'm gonna go back, get a rod and try and get this uh, challenge up and running. The forfeit has to be slug themed, doesn't it? It's a slug themed challenge. So the forfeit, should I pass, has to be slug themed. Well, yeah, but you're gonna have to find the slug. If you want- Well, okay, I'll walk and say, there's a slug, pick it up, put it on your top lip. But that's, that's you're asking me to do multiple things. It's, it's part of, the, it's part of the, the thing. It's all part of the forfeit. My forfeit is I have to hold on wearing rubber gloves. No, no one said rubber gloves. Whoa, 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 whoa. No one said I couldn't. That doesn't say that. I think it does. It doesn't say it. It does now that I've changed. No, no. Well, I've got the text on my phone. That's what I read out to everyone. You're not changing it. So my fault. You don't even have rubber gloves with you. Yes, I do. Okay, not rubber gloves. I went to the petrol station and got them gloves that you put on when you fill up with petrol. Well, I did. Well, it's not happening. Well, you say that. So my forfeit. It's not it is. No, it's not. For my forfeit to you, should I pass? Seeing as you can't grow a moustache, we can use the slug to your advantage and give you a slug tash. Just put it on your a big and right. It spans your well, top. That's not happening. Oh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> so you either put it there, really mash it on so it stirs on your face as well. <laughs> Right, we're going in. I've been pinging in floaters for quite a while now and they are proper on it. Okay, so I've got, I've got multiple options here. 
I've got fish taking floaters just down here to my left. I've also been introducing floaters to the right on the end of the island, which are drifting in just over the back of this weed in front of me. And those fish are going crazy right now. They, they are absolutely troughing those floaters. Um, and, and those fish, we've got a band of weed between these fish and those fish. So should I hook one of these and it disrupts this shoal and they go off the feed a little bit, I then got a nice, nice backup over there where there's enough of a, of, a, of a wall, if you like, where that weed is. So fish I catch here won't disturb those fish over there. So right now it's, it's looking good. Look even better if I can get a fish on the bank. So I'm going to stop wasting time and uh, get a hook bite on and make a cast. So it's time to make the first cast. There's so many fish here now. I've just put out a load of floaters, they've devoured the lot and they're swimming around looking for more. So I'm going to cast this extra large bolt bubble past where all the fish are and sl slowly sneak it in place. I'm going to try and pick out the bigger ones, but I think that's easier said than done when there's so many of them swimming around together like this. There, we're angling. It's a bit of a, a bit of a drift there. It's annoying. Go away, I don't want you. They're about eight pound. Yeah, there's a bigger one just behind it. Oh well, didn't get one first cast, but managed to get one second cast. <laughs> so, that didn't take long. I probably could have had one first cast, but I could, it was only a small, a small fully scaled mirror of about eight, nine pounds, approached the bait and I, I pulled it away from that one. When uh, every pound means a second, I wanted to uh, cause as little disturbance as possible to the swim. Oh no, that's not good. Fish has gone well down to the left. There's quite a lot of branches and snags and things like that down there. Oh, that was lucky. He went right down to the left, right up against the branches of the trees. And instead of coming back through them, it, it kited out into open water. We got away with that one. It's not a big fish, but the water here is so shallow that all they can do is run out. I say it's not a big fish, it's a nice start. Come on, come on. Got the net stuck in all the silt. Get in, get in, get in. Yes, what a start that is. That is unbelievable. Second cast. And we've got probably 14 seconds, maybe 15 seconds of holding a slug. Yes! Get some more floaters in, try and keep the fish feeding for as long as can. There's still fish feeding out there now, which is amazing given all that disturbance. Because it's so shallow, cause any disturbance like that, it's just, it's so unavoidable. But it hasn't bothered the fish one bit to take in straight away. Ooh! What? 15, fa 15... I don't believe you. Well, believe it. 15, 6, and we're rounding it up to the nearest oh, half pound. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, so not. it's 15 and a half seconds. It's not 15 and a half seconds. It's 15, 15, 6, so 15 rounded up to the no, nearest second. It's 15 and a half seconds. It's 15, 15 and a half rounding, seconds. We're not rounding Why? anything up. Why? 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 That's Why a silly rule. Round it up? Well, it's, it's, well it's, silly, it's not a silly rule, it's the rule. That's 15 and a half seconds then. No, so. not. 15 and a half seconds on the board. 15 seconds. That's it. Well, are you keep a note of them all? Yeah. Well, what an amazing start. I think less than five minutes angling and we've got 15 and a half seconds 
off the three minutes that I've got to hold a slug for. Harry's not disagreeing with me, so it's definitely 15 and a half no, seconds. So there was no there was no objections. The no rules, objection. The rule is you, is you had two pound. seconds to object, and you never did. That's so what, what <laughs> law is that? <laughs> okay, so we've got 15 seconds off the three minutes, and so a load of fish feeding out there. So I'm going to waste no time at all in putting him back and trying to get another one. another one no messing about you've been using delay tactics on me all day answering phone calls from strangers talking to them for half an hour don't even know them get off the phone <laughs> honestly it ain't normally like this So I've just cast the rod back out there. I've just got the rod laid on the ground. There's no need to concentrate on the hook bait itself. The fish will let you know when, the, when they've picked up the hook bait. The, the, the takes are quite self-explanatory really. It's usually a big eruption on the surface um, where the fish obviously feels, feels the hook and the bolt, the bolt bubble does its job of setting, setting the hook. Um, Looking back in my, my early float fishing days where I used to focus on the hook bait and strike when I, when I saw a fish put its lips around it, the amount of bites I used to miss and as a result spook more fish. Um, I was doing more, more harm than good to the swim. Um, a lot of the times that I'd strike far too early and, and there are times when the fish does put its lips around the hook bait and you don't catch a fish as, as a result of it, but the fish usually just lets go and carries on feeding um, and you haven't disrupted the swim and the hook bait's still there ready for another fish there's another bite <laughs> there's no need to panic or anything like that the float is doing its job it's setting the hook it's just a case of, of picking up the rod that's not another, that's a, that doesn't look a bad fish actually. Mark, they are literally going mad, like this is ridiculous. Well. Three casts. I could have had one on every cast if I if I'd have just hooked that fully scaled, that little one. It isn't normally like this, I can tell you. I mean, elsewhere on, on, the, on the lake where that ripple is, they do seem a bit reluctant to feed, but round here in that sheltered water, I mean, it's, it must be about it feels about five or six degrees warmer, at least, around this side. Come on, come on, come on. The net stuck. Come on, come on, swim in the net, swim in the net. Yes! <sighs> it's all going quite well, so far. And that's definitely bigger than the first one, definitely bigger. Right, no time to dither. 19, 13. <laughs> that's 19. <laughs> Wait again. No. <laughs> so, three casts, two fish on the bank, and with this one, I was three ounces short of earning 10 valuable bonus seconds because this one weighs 19 pounds 13 ounces. But this still takes me up to 34 seconds off that three minute target. So, yeah, things are going quite well at the moment. Well, not surprisingly, after those two fish and all the disturbance of the swim, the fish have eased off a little bit. A few have drifted out of the, of the area. They are coming back in momentarily, but they're definitely not feeding quite as aggressively as they were. I think there's still more fish to be had here, but I do need a backup plan. Um, I am still putting in floaters uh, in the swim to the right and letting them drift through and there are fish taking over the other side. There is quite a, a drift over the other side though, so it will need, mean different tactics. Um, we'll be fishing over depth zigs over there 
and they, and they are they are taken confidently the other side of that weed so i think this is good for one more bite yet then it will we'll have to employ a, a change of tactics i think to keep things moving forward <laughs> trying to molest it on the way in. Might be able to get two in the net at once. That counts. Come on. Come on. Yes. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. So fish number three and 14 valuable seconds off the slug holding time. This now puts me on 48 seconds off three minutes. So, uh, yeah, things are definitely going in the right direction. There is still fish feeding out there though, and I am well aware that this could stop at any moment. These fish could move out of the shallow water and push into the deeper, deeper area or push into a less pressured area. So I'm gonna slip it back and uh, try and get another one as quick as I can. play this one right, I might be able to get four in the net here at once, but a longer land in it, and look at this. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I can't see if it's in it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there was that much muddy, silty water, I couldn't tell if it had gone in or not. Yeah, so that's fish number four. Moving in the right direction, but with every fish I catch, there's more and more fish moving out the area. It is only so shallow and, like I said, they, they won't withstand that much disturbance and, and pressure before they start moving out into a, a safer area of the lake. So I need to capitalise on what I've got. So this is fish number four. And at 16 pound, this now takes me over the minute mark. I think a minute and six seconds, I think something like that. So I'm pretty much a third of the way there. And I'm only a couple of hours into the session. So it is going well, but I'm all too aware that this could stop just as easily as it, it started. And the, like I say, the fish could move out the area and it could all go horribly wrong. But uh, right now, things seem to be going uh, in my favor. So this is alright, just a just a tea break, middle of the day, whilst they're still feeding really well, just because you I'm know hungry. it's going well. I go I'm, I'm, I want to get banged on again. Yeah, this seems too civilised for you to be in a rush. Well, I am hungry. I need to fuel myself. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Actually, it's more of a sprint, isn't it, really? 24 yeah. hours. It's only to take time out to fuel my body and get in the zone. Just half time, that's all. Well, just two and a half hours into a session. 24 hour <laughs> session, half time. What would you call it? It's not even a pit stop, is it? Yeah, milch. In the van. Can't be asked. Just have to black it. Black. I'm not going back. Once you, well, that, that's why you get the saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's where that saying comes from. <laughs>
So while I'm waiting for the fish to get back on the feed, I thought I'd go through my float of fishing essentials that I always carry with me. First of all, I've got one of the bucket carryalls here. And inside the bucket itself, I've got some large 11 mil floating trout pellet. I much prefer trout pellet to normal dog biscuits. Um, I'm not saying that you won't catch carp on dog biscuits. Obviously you will, they've caught carp for decades and I'm sure they'll catch carp for decades to come. But I do feel that once the fish get a taste for the, the floating trout pellet, it, it's something that they actively search for and, and, and just love the taste of them. So yeah, I've got some large um, 11 mil floating pellets in here. Um, then if you go through that, I've got my pouches here as well where I've got all my, um, all my little riggy bits. I've got some of the, the zig and floater hooks, some fine silicon for going over the eye of the hooks there. Um, little bits of cork and baiting needles in one of the little storage boxes there. I've got the zig and floater line in breaking strains from 10, 12 and 15 pounds. I've also got some of the, the zig aligner sleeves in there as well. Um, oh, I've got a little pot of Vaseline as well, which I always carry with me. I've got a nice little pot in my floater bag and a big massive tub in my rucksack. <laughs> because you never know. You never know when you're going to need it. Um, got a little, little storage bag there with the bolt bubbles in as well. Uh, scissors, obviously. And I've got some hook baits. I've got some of the CC Moore Duo floater hook baits, which are kind of like a, like a pop-up boily, very oily, fishy smelling pop-up, uh, which I trim down to, to match the size of the, uh, the loose feed that I'm using. Um, I've also got some more options here. I've just got a little pot of some soft, hookable floating trout pellet in there as well. Um, throwing stick, that's something that I would always use when I'm float fishing over a catapult. Um, in the past, amount of times I was having to stop and do repairs on catapults, either the, the elastics or the pouches or things like that, because uh, it's in constant use through the day. Feeding is, is essential part of float fishing. It's in constant use and it does take some hammer. And yeah, the number of times I had fish feeding in front of me and I couldn't get the bait out because I was repairing my catapult, whereas with a throwing stick, there's none of that. Plus you can get them out further as well. Um, then I've got a bucket here uh, with some different size floaters. I have my smaller floating pellets here and I do think that these small 6-8mm floating pellets, I do think they really get the fish feeding. Um, and obviously with them being smaller, it keeps the fish feeding for longer before they get full. So yeah, I think they are really good for, for keeping the fish um, occupied and feeding in the swim for longer. Then I've got various oils as well, um, should it be windy and I want to, want to create a slick on the surface, then I'll either coat the, the, uh, the, the loose feed in oil or pour it into a spot. Um, so yeah, I've got some tuna oil. I also carry several bottles of just cheap sunflower oil as well. Um, all, all helps to create a slick. Um, and occasionally I do also take a rod and reel with me as well. So yeah, I've got one of the X3 uh, floater rods, 10,000 size reel loaded with 12 pound surface mainline. And then the XL bolt bubble, which you've seen me using today, and the zig and floater hook link, going down to a size 10, zig and floater hook, and the floating pellet fished really tight to the, to the, back, of the back of the hook shank. And that's it. So it all fits neatly into these two, these two buckets, these two bags means I can stay mobile throughout the day. There was a slight period that afternoon where they seemed to um, seem to back off. I'm not sure how many fish into the session I was, but there was a point where the wind changed direction ever so slightly and was pushing more down the channel around the island. And it wasn't, there wasn't as much 
slack calm areas there had been um, which meant I wasn't able to get the, the, the same level of presentation on the standard uh, float fishing uh, uh, style that I had been fishing. There was a slight lull in activity. The fish, whilst they were still feeding, it was in the ripple and his presentation had just been rubbish and he wasn't getting the bites that he was getting previous, which just meant that Mark had to work a little bit harder and think a little bit more about how he was going to get his next bite. So I switched over to the over depth eggs and I'd gone from not having a bite in, I think about an hour and a half, um, to getting one very, very quickly indeed. And it always feels good when you have a, we have a change of plan and it works so quickly. Gives you a proper, proper boost. Not that I needed it, I was already feeling quite confident actually. I think now I'm at the stage where I can maybe start thinking about what forfeit I'm going to set Harry. No, that bit of the chat, we're not doing that now. No? No. 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 Right. Everyone would love to see you bite into a slug. How many seconds is that? 16 seconds, this. Smallest fish of the session, but still looks 10 seconds, 11 seconds. Oh, Harry, what are you going to do? Just had two bites in, in minutes. Yeah, you haven't got the other rod back out. No, I've, I've, I've got no rods in now. I'm just about to cast that rod back out now, so I think this could be the one. Might just ban fishing on the surface. Really? That would be rubbish. That would just be... Imagine all the hate mail you get. Right, let's get this one back out there. No, don't, no, 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 no. We're doing the fish first. It's all right, don't worry. I've, so I've got two landing nets. I've got two landing nets. I've got two landing nets, don't worry. Well, this is fish number seven now. And although it is the smallest one I've caught so far, it's still 12 seconds off the slug holding time. And to be honest, I had no idea that this, this session was going to be quite this prolific but this fish now puts me over halfway and I really do think there's, there's every chance I could have this challenge passed before we go into darkness. And that is now my goal. I really want to see Harry do the forfeit that I've got planned for him. So I'm going to throw everything at it now. I'm going to really turn the screw. I'm going to get this fella slip back as soon as possible, get some more bait out there, put those two over depth zigs out I'm also going to try and feed a separate float of fish in line. I'm throwing everything at it. I want this challenge in the bag. I could sense that there was a lot more fish to be caught. And I wanted to get this session wrapped up as quickly as possible. Didn't mean to it, didn't mean to it, that one quite <laughs> right on his nose end. When Mark got three rods on the go, I knew that time was ticking and um, that it wasn't going to be long before all hell broke loose. I got the float rod out as well, all guns blazing. I'm not messing about now.
Oh no! No! What am I going to do now? No! I don't want that one to go in them snags. <laughs> Right, well that one can kite there in the weed, that's fine. You just kite into that weed. And this one will play in. <laughs> well, the fish that I've hooked on the surface rod has just kited into all the weed, so he's just happy sat in all that weed. He's, he's away from any snags, he's just completely embedded himself in that weed bed. So he's okay. Oh no way! You've got to be kidding me! No, this is just ridiculous. No. Right. Oh, no way. Right, well this one I'm just playing now. He's in the wee bed. That's good, he can stay in that wee bed. Just lodge itself in there. Just stay there. I'll come back for you. This is crazy. Triple take. I said I was going to tighten the screw and go for it. Come on. No, get in. I can't tell if it's in or not. There, right, that's one in the bag. Is it still on? Yeah, it's still on. Yes! Well, that's a double bubble. Let's see if we can go one more and make it a triple nipple. Is it still on? Yeah, it's still on. Ah, oh, that's come off just. Ah, oh, no! I want it to be nipple! <laughs> still. Got to be happy with the double bubble and the both decent sized fish as well. I am going to cast this back out though. The hook's still razor sharp. Get straight back out there because this fish feeding like mad. I'm going for it, Harry. I can, I can kind of see. Twenty pound, exact. Well, one ounce exactly. Well, I said I was going to go for it, and I meant it. So, triple take, and the first fish I landed was this. Twenty pound exactly, which means a massive thirty seconds off the off the time because there was a 10 second bonus for a 20 pounder. So yeah, this really does put me well on my way. <laughs> well on my way. <laughs> and I think the other one's bigger. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, that would be nice. That would be nice. 20 pounder. Ready? Yeah, it is bigger. Eight ounces bigger. 20 pound, eight ounces. So that's just given me, them two fish, a whole minute of the three minutes. Wow. That is, that's a bit of a result. Two bites, two twenties, well, three bites, two twenties. That'll do, yes. Well, Harry, you best start preparing yourself for this forfeit I've got in mind for you because these past two fish have given me a whole minute of the time and it puts the finishing line well within reach. Um, potentially, if I'd have landed all three fish from that triple take, that could have been it. That could have been the challenge passed. 
but it now leaves me needing one more decent sized fish. I think an upper double. I've not quite done the maths, but I think if I get like a, a 17 or 16, something like that, then I think this challenge is in the bag. <sighs> <laughs> I wish I'd done this earlier really, two rods out on the over depth sig, but then it would have been wrapped up ages ago, wouldn't it? But uh, yeah, what a what an amazing session it's been. I've, I've absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. Right, 15. 15. 19. 19. Uh, 15. 19. 14. Yeah. 16. Yeah. 14. Yeah. 16. Yeah. 12. Yeah. Then your bonus point fish, 30 and yeah. 30. 166. And obviously I need 180. 180. So, 14 pound off completing the challenge. You've only had one under 14 pound. Yeah. And you've got, I'd say about 18 hours. Yeah. I told you I want this wrapped up before it gets dark. <laughs> it's still, it's still like three hours before it gets dark. Have you seen it behind you? Yes, right, okay. So I need a 14 pounder. Yeah. There's fish Pac-Man in behind me. Could this be it? You're little. Go away. You're the one I want. Turn around. Turn back on this way. This way. Okay, well either of you two. You'll do. Either one of them. Either one. Oh, like that is it. Let's just shy away from that. Let's have another look. Well, I've got that many fish over me right now. I would expect a bite any second, but it's just not happening. I'm just watching them come up to the, the hook bait and shy away at the last moment. So I'm just finding down the hook link a little bit. I don't know why I did it. I had, um, I had a couple of ready tied hook links um, on, the, on the 12 pound zig and floater when I've been fishing with 10 pound all day quite successfully, but I had a couple pre-tied and I didn't have, I didn't have any more tens. I won't make a won't make a difference, and it didn't. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm glad I did have a 12 pound hook link on, because it's trying to get near them, them trees on the far side. It's the first one that's really made a proper dash for it. But you've got to love takes like that. Just no, has it got it, hasn't it got it, none of this striking and missing bites, none of that. There's a massive eruption on the surface. You, know, you just see the, the line just snaking away, rod arching round. Love it. Never get sick of seeing that. It's not a bad fish as well. It's not a bad fish for that. But then I got lost on the way. I might lose a three thoughts I'll in my head buried by the way. Trying to pick myself up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! I'll be that then. <sighs> Is it bigger than 14? Uh, yeah, it is. It's not quite as big as I first thought, but it's certainly bigger than 14 pounds. Oh. I don't really know what to say to that. I'm a bit stunned really. I never expected it to be passed quite this quickly. I thought it would have gone right down to the wire. But before I get ahead of myself, I do need to weigh it. I mean, it could be hollow for all I know. I'm looking at it thinking it's about £17, but we don't know until we weigh it. So let's do that and make it all official. Or not. Well, I'm pretty sure it's over £14, but... 
17 and a half. Yes! <laughs> so that is that. I'm still a bit lost for words, I really am. I just never expected it to be over this quick. Story of my life. And that will be challenge complete. I don't think I've smashed it out the park quite this much since the old school challenge at Cuttle Mill. Um, I never expected it to be like this, I really didn't. I thought it was gonna go right down to the wire. Um, I fished well and loads of times in the past and had some very hectic, prolific sessions, but today those fish have been absolutely bang on it. They have been demolishing those floaters and I've just made the most of the opportunities that were there, really. But now, what I'm really looking forward to is Harry completing his little forfeit, which I have in store for him. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Barbecue food, beer, cider. Go down shops. Might as well celebrate. Well, I've got nothing to celebrate. <laughs> Yeah, the pork is really good. Got to have a big carpy fire, haven't you? You got to. Summer nights, barbecue, big carpy fire. It's kind of already doing better than I thought. Are you enjoying this? I am. I love making fires. I'm going to have my bed chair right next to this. We need to find some slugs. More slugs. Part of your forfeit. Balancing a slug on your top lip. How are you even going to pick it up and put it on my lip? I'll just kick it in a bucket. It'll be fine. No, I'm not pick. No, 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 no. I find it, put it in a bucket. You pick it up and attach it to your top lip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you getting it in the bucket? I just. They're using twigs as chopsticks. There you go. Done. I've done it before. Well, you it's need to go. Forfeit. Well, you've got to go and find them. Well, both go. You, 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 we need. To, well, I need your face there as a guide to pick one <laughs> for the, the right size. I need to use your mouth as a measurement. <laughs> Good though, yeah. Well, no, I'm not really. I'm not a fan of this at all. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> we could have had this wrapped up sooner. I vibrated on my blend and I quite liked it. <laughs> it's 20 to 11, we need to go and find you a slug. <gasps> what? <laughs> oh, f That's a perfect size for your lip. Look at it. You don't to roll it into the there it is let's just get another one just in case it's not big enough you might need two or he's like one <laughs> might have one inside that would be the one that would be good wouldn't it yeah no yes look at this one well that slid in very nicely let's get some more though just in case it isn't enough you might as well have a slug tash. No, come and on, let's beard. go back now. What you want is like a Mozza style <laughs> chin strap. <laughs> I am not doing that. Come on, you know you want to. I don't want to. Don't think <gasps> Look at the size of that one. Oh, he's going straight on your lip. <laughs> Look at the size of that. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> oh. Yes. 
one more then we're laughing. I reckon that one's probably... I am not having that on my top. I, I think that one is more... <laughs> oh, yes, that's perfect. No, I'm not having that one. That's the top like... lip special, <laughs> that one. <laughs> that's... No. That's the top lip special. <laughs> this is going to be great. Slug, tash and beard. That's it. We've got enough there. That'll create the look I'm trying to achieve. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Mm. You picked it. It is almost a continental breakfast, isn't it, really? Almost. It's not your traditional. <laughs> Are you joining in? Yeah, well, if you pop. Okay. At least pass it to oh. me. Don't put it on the floor. We decided we're doing the donuts first. Yeah, we're yeah, not yeah, going yeah, for yeah, the... yeah, 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 yeah. I thought we said we were going to go for the. Um, Best first. The... Oh yeah, no, that, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Just checking the temperature of the brew first, see if the donut can can handle it. It's a good temperature. Do you dunk a donut? Whoa, where do you think Dunkin' Donuts came That's from? That's how it got its name. Exactly. <laughs> there you go, I've, no, I've dunked. Oh. I see now that's why they either put up the name. That's, that's legendary. It feels Come dirty on. though. It feels so wrong. <laughs> oh, that feels filth. I feel like I need a shower afterwards. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> you I feel like my mouth's been violated. It's weird. It, it feels wrong, but I liked it. It's like I shouldn't have liked that. I shouldn't have enjoyed it. No, but I did. I can think lots of analogies I can compare it to, but I can't really say them. I'll say one and edit it out. It's like, um... It's like the first oh, no. time you stuck your finger up your... No? <laughs> no? No? That's not what you were going to say. <laughs> I, I thought, honestly thought that's what you were going to say. You weren't going to say that. No. Really? Is that what you were going to say? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't going to say that? No. Really? No. Yes, you were. No. Of course you were. So why does this feel good? <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't what you were going to say? No. Really? No. Crying. It was like when my phone vibrated on my lap last night. <laughs> that shouldn't feel good, but it does. <laughs> like that? Yeah. 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 Like when you sat on the set e in your dressing gown and the dog comes in and licks your balls. <laughs> <That's> yeah. just... <laughs> it's like that, isn't it? Really? It's a bit like that. <laughs> down here. Yeah, you lie down there and I shall apply the treatment. I've had lots of... Oh. Does it smell? I, think is, I think this is going to be worse for <laughs> me than it is for you, actually. I'm not... No, I'm really you, actually feeling squeamish. I, you've I got was to be impressed, right. though, with my slug mitt that I've devised with my doubled over carrier bag and a wristband to create a slug mitt. Oh, look at him crawling oh, he's, out he's seen you. He's, he's seen you. Oh, that's going to be perfect for your top lip. Oh. Right, I'm going to have to hold this between me legs. I know it's a bit weird. No, I can't do that. I'll just put it next to you. Oh, I'll put, I'll, I'll I'll put the treatment jar next to you. I didn't... Hello, oh. Oh, he loves you. Oh. Just keep I it. can't. It's keep it. I was all right He's until all right. it's come to that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to Look do at it. the size of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I genuinely don't want to do it. it. Keep right. hold of the treatment jar. It's all right. Oh, I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> oh. 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 I'm not going to oh. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You dropped it! Oh no! Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Sorry, it's on your phone. Sorry. Uh, 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 he's still. He's still. He's still. He's still. He's still. He's still. He's Where's the treatment jar gone? <laughs> Is it? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <right there. laughs> but because you were, if you'd have just kept oh, still, God. it would have been all right. <laughs> that doesn't count. Right, come on. Go. Right, just, just, just keep still. No, just keep still. What are you doing? What are you? I need, I need, just keep still. I need to get him out the treatment jar. <laughs> <laughs> Jar. Don't! I couldn't get my hand in the treatment jar. This one. Look fine. how fat they go. Like, just like, come on, let's get it done properly. Well, I think it. you've hurt him. Look. It doesn't look well. I admit. Like, oh, like, I okay. thought I had snot, but it wasn't. Right. It. <laughs> right. This is the one. This one's actually look. This one looks like he's up for it. <laughs> this, like, like, stop! You're making him scared. <laughs> stay on. It won't stay. <laughs> You're literally. <laughs> that's it. I'm not. That's it. That's it. Oh my, you have literally covered my face. You have covered my face in, oh my God. I was, I was you, were, you were deliberately <laughs> wiping it all. Look at that. Look, that has literally just come off my face. Uh, uh, that wasn't <coughs> intentional. Right, you never got filth. one that, just no. get one to cling onto your top lip. Just no. Put, oh, go, like, like, no. go like this for your lip. No, that's Curl it. Curl your lip up. No. Just go like that. No. You were, you put it on No. Then. You just, were deliberately rubbing I it was, over my face. I, was, I, was, I, was, I was trying to get it to stay on your top lip. No, it's not happening. Well, that challenge failed on your behalf. Don't care. All this constant wriggling and writhing about, the slug just ended up in his mouth. And, uh, yeah, I felt awesome, it really did. <laughs> it wasn't intentional, but, well, maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs>